Hi, everybody. Meteorologist Joe Chaffee here. Weather in five, five days and five minutes on the 6th of May, 2022. And uh, we're recording here at 4 p.m. Eastern time. And you can see our storm system just chugging along. And when you get a storm system like this in the month of May, it does uh, create uh, severe weather issues. And particularly in the southern mid-Atlantic states down uh, through the southeast, we're seeing that in the meantime. Uh, you can also look at this loop and realize that these clouds are moving from west to east for the most part. So is the storm system, which means that we got to get to we got a long way to go to get all of this out of the way. The system has a large circulation covering the east and uh, it's having implications uh, with the weather just about everywhere. So on the radar, <clears throat> we are pretty much covered in uh, rain. Most of it is on the light to steady side, I guess I would describe it. You start to get into some heavier bands of rain now that are moving into south central and southeastern Pennsylvania. This is where we are going to see the heaviest rainfall amounts out of all, all of this, probably on the order of two to maybe as much as three inches. Uh, everywhere else will get a bit less, but uh, as far as the rainfall forecast is concerned, now you can see the amounts really drop off as you head up north in the Hudson Valley, north of Route 84, and in Connecticut, north of Route 84, you start to get uh, well under an inch. And of course, if you head far enough north and you head up toward Albany and points northward, uh, you don't get anything at all. Boston is just barely out of it, too. But uh, we're looking at uh, one to uh, an inch to an inch and a half on Long Island, two inch amounts across much of New Jersey. And you can see where the max area is here in south central and southeast PA of about two and a quarter to maybe as much as three inches in some places. And uh, this is the reason why uh, we have. Uh, some uh, flash flood watches that are up, and we'll take a look at the uh, watches and warnings map. Uh, we also have three working tornado watches, and that, those are the areas in yellow, uh, central and southern Virginia. This is outside of, by the way, uh, outside of the Washington, D.C., Baltimore area, just about all of North Carolina except the southeast, uh, South Carolina, uh, northern part of South Carolina and northern Georgia uh, under a tornado watch, as is uh, much of uh, the southern half of Georgia. And we have severe thunderstorm watches uh, up for South Carolina and coastal New Jersey. Please bear this in mind if you're watching this on a replay later this evening or tonight. Obviously, what you're seeing is dated. So please go to your local National Weather Service office forecast page, and you can access that by going to what I have on the screen, weather.gov. So uh, I'm going to just go back quickly to the radar, and we are seeing quite a bit of severe weather breaking out across Tennessee, eastern Kentucky, and starting to see severe thunderstorm warnings uh, going up in North Carolina and also in parts of southern Georgia. The green boxes are all flash flood warnings that are up uh, in, uh, in West Virginia. Uh, so we're going to probably see a little bit more of this as we uh, head into the evening hours. Here's the uh, the uh, Storm Prediction Center. There are your three tornado watches that are up at the moment. And uh, we have uh, on the uh, convective outlook, uh, the large area of enhanced risk for severe weather uh, that uh, covers northern Georgia, uh, west much of South Carolina and North Carolina into southern Virginia, uh, this enhanced risk, by the way, it comes with a 5% tornado risk. This has actually just been updated. Uh, we have a 10% tornado risk in, in uh, southeastern Virginia, actually south central, southeastern Virginia, uh, the northern areas of North Carolina on the eastern half of the state also under a 10% and a much larger 5%. You can see where the 2% goes uh, to the southern part of the Delmarva Peninsula, uh, just to about uh, the Washington, D.C., Baltimore, Washington, D.C., uh, and then north and west up into northern West Virginia. We're not going to see too much going forward tomorrow. Uh, we're looking at severe weather risk in central and south Florida, also in parts of Nebraska and in parts of South Dakota. And uh, Sunday, no severe weather being indicated by the Storm Prediction Center. Here's the rainfall amounts. And they, uh, uh, this does not include what has already fallen today. This is actually uh, from 8 p.m. tonight uh, for the next for seven days to uh, 8 p.m. next Friday night. And we're looking at about an inch and a half uh, in uh, Pennsylvania, on top of what's already uh, already down. Uh, and uh, the amounts decrease a bit as you go further to the south. So just bear that in mind. We've got rainfall between now and 8 o'clock. That does not count in this particular forecast. So nothing really much has changed in terms of the overall outlook. 
for Eastern Pennsylvania to Southern New England. We've been talking about a gloom and doom Friday, Saturday, and probably Sunday. I don't see any reason to back away from that. Your low is going to move over into West Virginia and Virginia as the upper low dives southward to off the Virginia coast. Uh, here we are Saturday late afternoon. Still showing rain in many areas from southern New England down into Virginia. Now, as the low begins to move offshore, we're going to see that rain area start to shrink and pull down to the south. This is a 2 a.m. Sunday morning, and by uh, 8 a.m., not showing any rain. But uh, I think we're going to have problems here. You'll see these isobars, these east north, e these easterly isobars that go all the way up to Boston. I think it's just going to be a real tough sell uh, to clear out. The other issue is with the low in this position and the upper feature offshore, we're going to have to keep an eye on whether some moisture that's out in the ocean decides to back westward. Maybe we can get away with it on Sunday that we won't see anything. But we do see the European and a few other models trying to throw some rain back into the coast Sunday night into early Monday morning. After the Monday, I think we have a shot here of seeing some genuine improvement. As we go into Tuesday and that low gets even further south, we might be able to get some drier air to come down from New England. And that low is going to be off the East Coast pretty much all this week. So it is going to be a, a problematic to some extent. Uh, the trick is going to be to get it far enough south uh, so that we can get some drier air to come down from the north. And uh, then as we move through the latter part of the week, you're still seeing the uh, impacts of that surface low offshore. But at that point, it's fairly weak. As far as temperatures are concerned, while we've got all this going on with the rain and once the ocean wind kicks in, we're going to settle down in the upper 40s and lower 50s and probably hold in a range between, say, 48 and 55 through the day on Saturday for eastern PA and southern New England. Maybe we'll get 50s to possibly near 60 inland on Sunday, although, again, I expect a lot of clouds. It's going to be a very uh, damp uh, damp day. Even if it doesn't rain, there might even be some patchy, some patchy drizzle. Um, Monday, still kind of questionable with gloom and doom. And then hopefully after that, we'll get into some genuine improvement. The uh, Joe and Joe show tonight is, well, there is no Joe and Joe show tonight. Uh, the J Joe and Joe show will be back on Sunday uh, at a 11 a.m. Eastern time. So hopefully we'll have better news for the week ahead. And maybe if we get a little luck and the system can pivot in such a way, because uh, it's going to get very warm in upstate New York and eastern Canada and over the Great Lakes, and eventually in western New York and the western half of Pennsylvania late this week, the, the, late next week, we see temperatures reach above 80. Uh, maybe with a little luck, we can get the low to pivot in such a way that we could share in a little bit of that warmer air, but no guarantees here from the management. Have a great Friday and try to have a great weekend.